Welcome to the Retrospect Podcast, a show where people come together from different walks of life and discuss a topic from their generation's perspective. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Stoney. Hello. And Jason. Hello, everyone. And we got a third time guest around. That's, yeah. I think that's the uh, most we've had so far. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah. brought Brandon back because he's got some uh, new information on uh, all this neuro warfare and all kind of stuff that's kind of James Bond- Bondish, <laughs> but uh, is uh, very interesting to hear about. So, well, before we get before we get into all the details, how you been? I oh, been yeah. doing a lot better. I'm glad to hear. Yeah, very grateful. That's awesome. Yeah, with successful reverse engineering, otherwise I probably wouldn't be here right now. Really? Yep. Well, you look good. Yeah, lost yeah. a lot of weight. Yeah. I've well, been purging the body out right uh, at all levels. That's good to hear, man. Well. I know you have a lot of good stuff to talk about on this episode, and I uh, guess what, what's the like, what's the what's the tagline? What's like the big thing? What's our big ticket item? We're uh, Brandon, about? It, you you kind of <laughs> shared with me via an email, and I thought that would be a good uh, kind of a good overarching, uh, you know, what we're kind of addressing in this episode. Sure, I'd say the topic or headline would be. Uh, Synthetic biology enabled wetware spy bugs, how they work, reverse engineered in the clear. And I have no muzzle, so this is perfectly fine to talk about. Well, Brandon, I, you know, this is, this is, this is. Really technical stuff, so I'm gonna give it to the to the technical guy who knows what the, you know this is about. So, why don't you tell us about this stuff? Kind of give us a, a an opening here. Let us know kind of what this is about. Then maybe we'll dive into a little bit of the a uh, little bit more of the uh, specifics. Sure. So, I would say uh, historically, people are familiar with bugs and spying, where it's like a little electronic device they plant it either in the location or by a person, or they um, wirelessly monitor the person. I mean, that's like the average person in America, um, uh, you know, Joe's plumbing. Joe knows about electronic bugs, most likely. He's heard about it, seen it in movies. Go to an electronic store in Tennessee next to some of the national security facilities. They actually have spy bug stores that sell off-the-shelf uh, spy bug right. equipment. I feel like the the common trope is like he's wearing a wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got the, you know. exactly. Right. Yeah. Everybody's spying on somebody uh, yeah, right, today. Right, it yeah. seems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now the way to think about it today, uh, the wire is inside of you. It's right. not external <laughs> any longer, and uh, the wires can be non invasively dosed. And what I mean by that is, if you get bugged by another group, another nation, industrial espionage, whatever. Um, you can get dosed from the air you breathe. Um, Dr. James Giordano at uh, West Point, he was giving a lecture there, and he goes over, you can search it on YouTube, where he uh, shows at the top of his pen uh, some nanotechnology-enabled wetware spy bug uh, tech, uh, which is comprised, he didn't say this in the clear, I'll say it in the clear, it was comprised of uh, mesogens and nematic crystals. And uh, James basically uh, shows to the whole class at West Point, you know, if I release this little top of the pin in this room, you all get bugged eventually um, mm. with the uh, with the nanotech, basically. So to to go over where, uh, where our team's at from what we got hit with, what we were bugged with, um, there's two modes, two primary modes that uh, synthetic biology-based um, wetware bugs operate in. One is a perch mode where it's covert. You don't know it's there. It's monitoring you. Our intelligence community in America uses it. Our enemies use it. Industrial corporations use it. Virtual um, nation-stateless groups use it. Um, quasi-religious groups use it, like really? Scientology. Okay, wow. Yeah. Um, and that's in perch mode where it's like passive, okay? Now, the non-invasively dose material, um, it can have more than one channel. In other words, um, it can be listening and monitoring um, uh, with more than one channel within one um, globule of the uh, send bio wetware bug. And you can have more than one globule of SynBio wetware bugs in you with more than one channel. Mm. 
So basically, your body is the attack surface now. Uh, if you get this junk in you from an adversarial nation uh, or group, um, they can spy on you, and then when they want to remove you for whatever reason, you don't do a deal with them, you don't take their money, whatever, they can weaponize you um, and remove you. The weaponization version of it is called, uh, like the FBI, intelligence community, they call it uh, conversion terrorism. That's the use case. Mm. So if someone can get dosed with this junk, and whatever group's monitoring them on one channel, and then the wetware bug is being programmed at a distance to build out a, a separate channel that's either a weaponization channel or what China's doing now, and this is, I'm going to put this in the clear, uh, to sabotage people is that they're taking the channel that's monitoring you and they're finding all the ways that they're able to sabotage you. And then when you become a threat to the CCP, they switch the channel through a key signal mm-hmm. and then it degrades you um, covertly and, and basically removes you. Well, and that's the little CCP uh, magic weapon that ZPLA is using. I, I found this interesting uh, on one of the emails that, you know, I've been receiving uh, re- regarding China. And it said, per a scathing March 13th letter from the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer, to Attorney General Merrick Garland, elite capture is a form of political warfare that seeks to control the actions of political academic, business, and cultural leaders to achieve policies and actions within the United States that it views as beneficial. Such manipulation is achieved through a variety of techniques to include financial incentives, financial dependence or compromise, business entanglement, offers of access to opportunities within China, ideological appeal, and even blackmail. So is this, I'm curious, Is how is this tech right now being utilized? Because it seems like we're awfully friendly with China right now, and I'm wondering if some of this tech is not right now, is is yeah. is being utilized right now and why it seemed like we, we can't get away from this country. Hands down. China did their brain initiative in 2016, made it public, but they, they were working on this before that. Uh, in 1999, they stated their uh, manifesto, what they were going to do to take down America. Uh, I published a brief on it. It's in the clear with reference to that article uh, that they uh, was translated. Um. So hands down, China's using brain weaponry on America. Look, we're their consumer. If they lose us, they lose China, right? They'll lose control. Mm -hmm. So they're literally using this wetware junk, uh, and they've publicly came out saying they've developed brain weaponry, and we have banned and blacklisted a lot of their companies. Uh, But they've got it deployed um, in Americans. Uh, I can firsthand speak for myself. They tried to uh, brain nap me is what I call it with the wetware bug. The stuff um, didn't make sense, a lot of stuff around me. Uh, happening around me since 2017, 2018. And keep in mind, I gave um, a Chinese delegation a tour of the nation's most advanced clean tech prototyping facility that I helped build in Los Angeles circa 2017. Mm-hmm. And uh, literally, this uh, this tech, all you got to do is just have some of the, um, uh, the dust material that's uh, synthetic biology nanotech-based with mesogens and emetic crystals, and just release it in a room, and you bug everybody in the whole room, the whole campus with the HVAC system, which is, you know, the site in Los Angeles. Uh, So in my opinion, uh, my professional opinion, after reverse engineering wetware spy bugs and the whole nanotech and neurotech back end, all the way to the genomic circuit level, uh, oh, by all means, they're doing that. We're we're in neuro war with China. If someone doesn't think that, then they're uh, completely not informed. They're misinformed. I think it also doesn't help that you know no one talks about that. I think it's a there's a big situation right now, like I, with news and media. I, I've been following some people who've been talking about it. That like there's a lot of stuff going on, um, politically and like you know all the things that are going on. You know, getting ready for the um, the election coming up this year. But like yet the big thing that we're all talking about is how all the college campus students are focused on the Middle East. And it's like of all the things to be worried about, like I don't think that's the thing to be focusing on. But yet everyone is so everyone's being pointed in that direction to be focused and hyper fixated on that one thing. But there's all this other stuff around us that no one's being told about. So I'm going to address your main point and I'll do a sub point. Okay. Uh, I would say the main point is that the. The use of neuro war 
you know, that's active right now, right, across America, across China, across other nations. Right. And there are nation stateless groups that have this deployed as well. Um, I would say that the the main point is China, CCP, and other terrorist groups, uh, whether that's a virtual nation state, uh, you can dump them in the terrorist group bucket, they're exploiting our weaknesses. Mm. Our intelligence community system and architecture for this um, cybernetic system, which goes in parallel to the spoken word that we're having with an oral conversation using audio longitudinal waves right now, is to quench any mention of the system to keep the system secret. China's neurostrike on America with adversarial wetware spy bugs is literally making that their attack weapon strength and turning our strength into our weakness. Mm. And I had a conversation with Robert McCrate at National Defense University, and he's been researching this. You know, he's a former retired intelligence community. And in his professional opinion, if we don't stop this, you're going to have China's system with their social credit monitoring score interweaving with America's system. And once it passes 50%, a critical number, the people around you, even though you're not connected to China's system, will influence you in a manner that you're compliant with China's social credit monitoring system. And well, you're, the, the United, not to interrupt you, the United Nations said they're in their their charter coming up for 2030 that they want to implement the Chinese social credit score. So the UN could be cognitively yep. captured already by China. Yep. China, that's a possibility. You can't rule that out by China CCP specifically. Mm-hmm. I, I'd say that's a high risk. Uh, because it, it it goes top down. Like if you look at replicating Facebook's model, why Facebook was so successful, he started at the top universities, a popularity approach, and rolled it out from there going down. Mm-hmm. Not saying down's better. I'm just saying that's the approach. They went Ivy out. Uh, Z, he sent his daughter to attend Harvard University. I've studied abroad at Harvard University, and I have an appreciation for that part of the country, that region. Uh, but by all means, our enemies sent their people in. They educated themselves in our systems. They know how they work. They have the connections with the elite families. Mm-hmm. By all means, all the families, kids that go to Harvard University, on average, are elite and very well connected. And then all the families have money in China. You know, I had a conversation with Claiborne Deming, the founder, one of the family owners of Murphy Oil. His kids all were educated in China, Mandarin. Okay? I used to work for Murphy Oil. Um, Deming was visiting a town hall meeting and I had an interesting uh, urine stall conversation with the man. I told him, uh, I, I knew he was a suit from Arkansas. I didn't know, you know, who he was at the time. I told him, I was like, sir, I just started working here about a year ago. I came here from the Caribbean. If I were you, I'd sell this place right now, man. Like there's so much stuff that needs to be repaired, replaced. You guys are in upstream focused. This is downstream. This is a headache. You know what he says to me? He looks at He's like, son, I've been trying to sell this place for the past decade. <laughs> Valera finally bought it. Anyways, I digress. The second point, the smaller point, all these kids, they're all TikToked. Oh, yeah. TikTok is a neuro weapon. Now, based upon our team's work and feeding our AI BCPS system, artificial intelligence, bio cyber physical system that our national defense system and DOD has, we're able to show enough data to get the House, the Senate, and the POTUS to totally ban TikTok. So that's a law that signed into effect. Then, uh, and Brendan uh, with FCC was very critical in this as well, uh, making this happen, and the national security agencies that had their eyes clouded, but now hopefully will get clearer. Now, check this out. India banned it in 2020, but China, CCP, and ByteDance had already socially mapped out everyone in India by that time, and then they leaked information through ByteDance, uh, basically saying that they had all the information. It's different in America. They got all our social networks, but they've had time to build out synthetic biology uh, networks inside of the people. So people who have been on TikTok for a very, very long time, uh, they are cognitively captured by the CCP. You have 170 million TikTok users right now in America. I don't have have TikTok. I don't want it. Never had it. Even if you don't have TikTok, but in your, if you're in a suburb neighborhood and there's dirty electricity harmonics, uh, which is why a lot of utilities are hardening the electrical grid, one of the reasons that they're not saying, 
if it's dirty harmonics with pulsing magnetic fields, your neighbor, if they're on TikTok and you have a pulsing magnetic field, it will contaminate you, even if you're not even using it, and it will monitor you. <laughs> Does that answer the uh, other point? Yeah. Um, so the kids are cognitively captured by China. Right. China's AI BCPS adversarial is dispatching commands subliminally to them into their subconscious through the Synbio neural lace wetware that goes into the brain, the central nervous system, and then eventually the motor cortex, which gets into conversion terrorism. And uh, keep in mind, once you're Synbio integrated, the transmitters, they operate through near-field communication, which is faster than the speed of light. So if someone's shooting at you, you'll have the sense to move out of the way of the bullet before the bullet comes at you. That's how advanced this tech is. Hmm. Wow. I mean, I mean, how advanced? I mean, I hear China, it, is, it appears to be super advanced into this stuff. How are we deploying this t- ourselves? I mean, you say we, we all have it. So is our tech just as advanced as theirs? Are we kind of behind the curve? I mean, are we ahead of them and, and we're using it in different ways? I mean, what's going on? So when you look at technology and ahead of the curve, behind the curve, or, 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 or on the curve, there's so many different technology domains. Uh, where it's at now is the domains are all matured and built out. But the gap is uh, a lack of creativity and ingenuity to connect them in novel ways. Uh, Just based upon the sheer number of brains that China has um, with their uh, other CCP coalition members compared to the number of brains that we have, uh, if you look at the rate of increase, it's on a trajectory uh, to where it's a threat. Uh, In certain domains, specifically NeuroStrike, uh, per Robert McCrate, he thinks that they're ahead of us in NeuroStrike technologies because they've been focusing their resources on that specific weak point to penetrate our pre-existing trillion-dollar systems that are globally built out. So with a NeuroStrike weapon, they can penetrate into our national defense, which has happened. What happened to me demonstrates that we're able to be pierced. Um, thankfully, through the grace of God and good people, we were able to figure out what was happening to me. Uh, it's synthetic biology um, activated by a key signal. Um, but to answer your question, you have so many different technology domains. It's the interface and the overlapping of all those with artificial intelligence to amplify it. Uh, that's what that I is was the weapon of war. There with that. That's the weapon of war. So if you're not part of an AI BCPS for your nation state now, uh, you're at risk of losing your nation if you're not part of a coalition or an alliance that has it. That's basically how the world is right now. So how does AI interact with this technology? I mean, what, what, how does it amplify it? So if I'm going to be commuting from point A to point B and um, say I work and I have a job and I'm going to work from point A to point B, point A is my residence, point B is the work, the license plate on my car, if someone has a camera or their visual cortex is optogenetically synthetic biology hooked up to an AI BCPS system that's on the road that observes my license plate, then that will dispatch if it's an adversarial AI BCPS, such as China CCP coalition, it will dispatch that to the AI using edge wetware, using near field and far field, and it will work to sabotage me on my commute. That can be a ramming. Uh, my truck got rammed end of 21, beginning of 22 in New Orleans. I didn't know it at the time, but that was part of China's. Um, so what do you mean get rammed? Weapon. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to. It's an accident. It, Someone run so, literally turns into you to damage your car. Okay. That's part of their weapon attack on us. Slow kill stuff. That's kind of gray area. Do you, was it intentional? Was it not? How do you know? It, 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 anything that's in that gray area is what they're doing to hurt us right now. Wow. Plausible deniability. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, because nobody would believe you. Of course. I mean, yeah. let's, let's be honest. Nobody would, would. Unless you're aware of neuro war and you view it through that lens and you know you get a mark on you by their AI like I do. Like, right. I am marked by China's AI. It doesn't like me. It even generated a signature, a 3D signature of my face that you can find online. I, I found it and published it. <laughs> wow. They don't like me. That's the, good. I'm happy about that. It uh, makes me happy. Uh, I, I, 
kind of keep it in the same vein a little bit, but kind of deviating. Um, have you have you heard about the second um, Boeing quality control guy that got killed or yes. died, quote unquote? Oh yeah, before his I saw hearing, that. all that kind of stuff. We talked about that a few weeks ago about the, the there was one person that was going to testify, uh, you know, against all that stuff, and then ended up, quote unquote, dying, you know, by what seemed like natural means or whatever. But yep. it's it amazing like, how that works. It's it, you know, we do these episodes and all of a sudden uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it comes out like two weeks or a exactly, week later. Yeah. It's like that would have been interesting to talk yeah. about or at least add to that episode mm-hmm. a little it, bit. It just made me, it kind of reminded me or it uh, felt very similar. I'm, the yeah. fact that, you know. I'm wondering if there's some connection with these major industries that have, a, de- saying, yeah. have a defense connection right. to and this it, again to this wetware oh, stuff. You, you know that, Boeing's got connections Something. in the defensive yeah. circle so right. to speak i mean boeing was the defense for a long time yep. so and just to clarify uh, my company uh, we're a prime dod and doe contractor and a prime means we're part of the defense industrial base so um basically the way our enemies do this they get their ai they find all the companies that are in the defense industrial base of america and they put them on the the uh the get rid of list mm-hmm. to weaken their enemy. I mean, that's that's the war. It's called hyper war. That's another name for it. That certain people call it. There's a book called Hyper War. It's out there. I think it was written by a guy that works out of Austin, Texas. You can check it out. Wow. It's yeah. called Hyper War. Hyper War. Age of AI warfare. Yeah. Mm. I'll have to get that. Yeah. And, you know, the way the attacks work, they're very covert and insidious. And, you know, I'm going to quote Robert McCrate because he's the leading subject matter expert in the public domain, him and James Giordano. Uh, but Robert was most helpful in, in pointing me in the direction because he's muzzled with certain clearances as well. But after getting pointed in the right direction, I was able to, you know, reverse engineer all this stuff in the clear. So you have top secret clearances? I kept away from a muzzle. That's how I can talk about this. That's the issue. Our best of the best all have clearances. So the Neurostrike attack from China CCP coalition into the NATO alliance system is literally concealing itself within our secret and cleared uh, requirements. But I've intentionally avoided top secret uh, and other um, clearances. Uh, because as a small business, I didn't want to assume that overhead risk. Right Now, I have had team members recruited by our nation that I had to sign for for clearance review as as a validation, just to be very clear. And I've had members of the FBI interview me, f- interviewing people indirectly on my team that I've vouched for. Right. Just to be clear. So. You said hyper war? Yeah, hyper okay. war. And I've been at a, a roundtable meeting with one of Boeing's um, CEOs, just to be clear, to put that out there, through Princeton Business Today. Uh, I was a member of Princeton Business Today. It's a group... Uh, Steve Forbes founded it, and if you're a student in undergrad and not on TikTok, if you're on TikTok, you better not follow up on this. Uh, but if you're a member of business uh, today, you can you can apply, and uh, it's pretty cool. Over the weekend, they'll fly you out to uh, Austin, Texas, or New York City, or a couple other locations around this country, and uh, you get to hang out with all the C-suite level executives of the Fortune 500s and other uh, Retired generals, uh, national uh, intelligence, crime insurance bureau, and in, I think NCIB. I got to hang out with retired Major General Worrell, uh, and how they go about insurance criminals, and how they uh, have all the quants that analyze it. Uh, yeah, it's a cool group. If you're an undergrad, go check out Princeton Business today. It'll provide you with an amazing network of people. If you're not a TikTok user, if you are a TikTok mm-hmm. user, you get off of it and then maybe consider applying. Wow. Now, I understand that with this, this TikTok ban, that part of the ban was either it, it gets banned or the company must be sold to an American, com- American company, if I recall right. That's correct. And on top of it, Bike Dance replied saying we're not selling it. <laughs> you don't sell a weapon of war that has an advantage over your enemy right. to your enemy. That there and I'm quoting other people that have said this too, if anyone needed confirmation on that, there's your answer. TikTok's bad. Leave it at that. Well, I can tell you it's bad just from some of the absolute stupid stuff that's on it. But uh, um, so so my understanding was that, 
I mean, y'all know, was that bill signed? I mean, is it now in effect? Has TikTok mm-hmm. been banned? The POTUS signed it. Oh, yeah. It's done. That's done. That went down in April. Okay, so we're done. That's what I thought. I, I, well, I, but, I mean, what does, so that, what does it, that mean? Because like, do people can still access TikTok? There's a timeline on it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when... on TikTok. <laughs> so when is that? I mean, do we all know when it goes offline? After the next presidential election. And is it going to be that way for all people, or is it just people in, like, the political sphere? Because I don't think it's it was... total a total ban, just like really? India okay. and Tibet. No, yeah, Nepal. Because I didn't hear Nepal. about that. Nepal is a total ban. India has a total ban, and we have a total ban now. That's going into effect. Okay. The total ban is the only way for it to work. Oh, right, right. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I don't. So it's I don't, right. You cannot. Right, you but, can no longer access the app. Period. It's gone. Once the total ban goes into right. effect. Because currently you still can. So that's, that's what I'm saying. That's I'm what I was. Right I confused, was curious. So. I don't have it, so I, I'm just curious. Right. I mean, because I know people do have it. And, I was curious, has it been, like, frozen, or is it still there, or, or what? People can still access it. Um, you could do data and the flow attacks on it. That's one way to attack it. Uh, the NSA published a reverse engineering software suite that you can use to um, pull the source code out of um, TikTok if anyone wants to go and hack it, have, have fun. But it, it's more advanced than that, right? The secret sauce, what they don't want to sell, is the whole back-end AI BCPS system to TikTok. TikTok, all it is, it's a content delivery platform, right? So the way, just let's step back a second. There's a whole field of technology called neurotechnology. That is one part of the technology stack required for synthetic biology, wetware, spy bugs to work, okay? Neurotechnology has three parts. One is the pipeline, whether it's wireless or hardwired to get data to and from a location. The second part is the content that flows through those quote-unquote pipelines, which are hardwired or wireless. The third part is the junk inside of your body, the uh, synthetic biology, um, which is comprised of mesogens, graphenes, quantum dots, and self-replicating nanotechnology. All three of those are required for a successful quote-unquote cognitive control monitoring data mining security system or adversarial system like China has uh, for social credit score monitoring to to be functional. Um, Once you're aware of that, uh, the world becomes a lot more simpler. So, okay. (laughs) Some of this stuff is just, it's it's really deep. Um, So, okay, I I have this, this, this synthetic stuff in my body. I, I employ these platforms that interact with this stuff in my body and it makes me think a certain way. Does it, does it cause disease in my body? What, what, what is the, all of the above, all I mean, of the above, all of the above. So it, it, in essence, it's like brain, it's mind control. More than that. It's a weapon as well. It can turn you into a biological virus factory think about what's people. happening if i may think about what's just happening with the uh the vaccine right okay um what's not being talked about now is all the morticians that are pulling the blood out of people are finding these long strands in people that's part of it all of this is part of it it, it can be it's it's designed to do certain things at the will of the operator they can make you do what they want they can make you say what they want it's the ultimate Manchurian candidate if they so choose to go that route, or they can turn you into a biological weapon if they chose. Or they could turn you into a kinetic weapon if they want you to go shoot somebody. They can make you do that too. It's Cor- basically a way that they can control you as a person So okay, on a mass scale. Correct. It's a surrogate system. That's yes. technical definition. Thank military. you. That was the word I was looking for. But okay, with my brain I, damage, I however, can't always pull I, I'm just up. trying to think, okay, say, like you said, you know, if it's a kinetic weapon, it make me go and do something terrible. Like, like sh- uh, take a, a tanker and run it into the Baltimore Bridge. Right, so Bridge. that's what I'm saying. Does the, does the compulsion that comes over, does the tech, is it, it, it when, it, when it, it takes over, and you know what you're doing, but you can't stop yourself? Or is it literally changes your brain where what I thought was wrong now, I don't think is wrong anymore? So I'm trying to understand. 
both, how that works. Both depending upon the channel. So there can be more than one channel within the globule of synthetic biology inside of your body. So one can influence you a little bit and train you, uh, but at the same time it can be building out another channel, which is the weaponized or uh, what I call the conversion terrorism, where the tanker and the bridge thing happens. Uh, so all that happens is you have synthetic biology in you, you have channel one, which is normal passive, but someone put in another synthetic biology bug into your body, and they're building out an adversarial channel. All they have to do is hit you with a key signal that could be something as old school as a directed energy weapon with a certain frequency uh, or sequence of frequencies or a sequence of notes if it's coming from a phone. Uh, all you have to do or hacked through, through a device is get key signaled. Uh, so you can get byte-based hacked as well. And once you get key signaled, any of those delivery routes, uh, even another person that has this junk in them comes next to you walks next to you, then can key signal you without them even knowing from the junk that's in them from China, CCP. Then you get key signal and activated. That's why it's so covert and hard to find. Like a traditional, conventional detective, uh, this is above and beyond their heads. And I've got a story, very sad, but it's important for people to be aware of this. There was a man, when I was troubleshooting this junk, I went to a, uh, a telecom store, and uh, I'll call him out, at t um, I went to AT&T, and the people there, I think some of them were actually on TikTok in that store, whether they work in there or people that were in the store. But on top of it, the people there were uninformed technically, like with some of the questions that I had. There was one person that was helpful, but not able to technically deliver on to answer the questions that I had to secure the phone. Um, I, I since educated myself, and I've answered that. But while I was there, there was a man that was like crying his eyes out, and there was a woman, a PI, that was helping him. Someone had hacked into this dude's account after he sold his house and stole like $190,000, like his whole life savings, gone. Mm. And they were trying to figure it out. I think this dude got wet where bug or hacked into. Uh, that's one of the ways that they can mess with you uh, with this technology. Um, just to put that in the clear. So, well, I mean, it's you, impacting you, average Americans. I like the way you talk. You brought up AT&T. We just did an episode a while back on AT&T on actually who owns AT&T and Verizon and the three top owners besides industrial shares are BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. Yeah. Which are these money people like we we're talking about. Well, BlackRock about. owns Neurotech. They have some hardware. That's exactly where stint, I'm going with this. They're one older. of the original, let's bring this in because the CEO of BlackRock came out and said, do you know why Bud Light did that? Do you know why Disney is doing this? Because we're making them do it. So they're just, they're, they have many tools that they're using to change what they want to happen in America and the world. So I'm going to put this in the clear. I've been in meetings with these private equity people at that top level. And uh, I'm going to put this in the clear. On average, most of them are all rich pricks. I've actually been in meetings with billionaires. And uh, I've pissed off some billionaires by telling them, no, I'm not going to do certain deals with them. And uh, Little did I know at that time that they actually use neurotechnology. Mm -hmm. I know that now. That is their little secret in the arsenal and their toolkit, which is no longer secret. It's in the clear now. And I'm going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So they're utilizing this check to basically get what they want. Oh, yeah. Hands down. And if you're not aware of it, you won't be able to think about it. Well, and for me, this is, again, the World Economic Forum, the World... Health Organization, Council of Foreign Relations, the, the, the um, uh, UN, and the attack on the American family. Because while the American family is strong, they're not going to be able to do the things they want to do. So they've been attacking the American family since the 40s. And it's the same money. It's the Rothschilds, the, um, uh, crap, what was his name? Rockefellers. Rockefeller. It's all the same monies. That's who Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street is. That's who this money is. Now, now I'm going to put something in the clear here, too. You know, just because you have money doesn't mean you're nefarious, right? No. They're, they're good, wealthy that families. That type of money, yes. Just to be clear. Now, I've rubbed elbows with some of those people mm -hmm. in those families. So have I. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Now, they're all stewards. They never built anything. This is the difference. Just so yeah, They inherited that money. Mm -hmm. Well, inheriting is one thing, but a steward is different than a builder or a creator. And, and what they're failing to realize is that they're selling out 
capitalism, for the love of money, working with China CCP and all those other families, and embracing techno-communism, while at the same time they're getting duped with more advanced versions that are piercing their neurotechnology systems, and it's blinding these families' eyes as Mm -hmm. well. George Soros, which I don't agree with a lot of his stuff, okay, but he has publicly came out and said that what China CCP is doing with their neuro strike and neuro weapons and neurotechnology is the gravest threat to open societies worldwide right now. And actually, I, I think he's on the right track, but I actually think he's the greatest threat. George destroyed Thailand. A lot of Thais can't yes. stand George. Yes. And I he, can he agree He is with one of the okay. greatest threats how, how to the world. How did he destroy Thailand? What did he do? I, I'm, I'm kind Tank of... the bot. He did like a... Uh, I'm not going to get into the financial details, but he basically did some type of short, possibly carry trade combination with derivatives and mm-hmm. parenthetical strategy to short the bot. Um, and I've been to Thailand, right? So I've firsthand talked to Thai. I don't care for this man. Now, I, I'm not saying... I don't, I don't, the dude's not my friend, okay? Um, he's not my enemy right now um, that I'm aware of. However, uh, I will say this. He has a society called Open Society Foundation, OSF, and he is aware of neurotechnology. And he did make a comment that he wanted to do some things before it's too late. You can kind of put two and two together there. He's aware of neurotechnology. He probably has a way to counteract it with transparent communication through cybernetics, and that's he's using that globally to counteract China. Maybe he's one of the tools in the UN um, UN's toolkit. But you know, the important thing is to not not get too distracted with a lot of the stuff going on in the world. It's all older technology. There's way more advanced stuff. You know, you can live. Uh, earthly life, worldly life, or you can live in grace. You got to make a choice which one you focus on. What about stuff going on in Ukraine with Russia? How where is Russia with all this neuro strike stuff? Russia has new physics weapons. They have new wave weapons. They just promoted one of their uh, units. Uh, they have a research unit that developed a lot of this stuff. They're very advanced in new physics, and they actually use it in their medicine. Uh, their medicine is more advanced than our conventional Western medicine because they use bioenergetics in it. They now, use, okay, wait a minute. Bioenergetics. What makes that? What makes that enhance their their medicines? So they can do things uh, such as imprinting. It's it's pretty commonly accepted, I think, in Russia. Um, imprinting using near field effects to heal people and help them get better, or to kill people. So, like, when you hear about poisonings now, like Russia being involved in a poisoning, that's so old. That's just distraction. They're actually using at-a-distance poisoning, using imprinting of a poison, which is at-a-distance remote kill or degradation. Unbelievable. Now, China has the manufacturing base with all the neurotechnology and hardware. So, when you combine Russia's new physics platforms and experience and fielded weapons— with China's mass manufacturing, dirt cheap, consumer grade, hardware everywhere. That's a pretty potent force, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I turned down money from both China, CCP, and from Russia. The Russians were professional compared to the Chinese. That was my interaction with them, right? So I can't confirm if it was Russia or China or another group that shot me up in 22, but it did coincide when Russia invaded Ukraine is when I got shot up. But just so everyone's aware, man, um, in my opinion— um, you know, China doesn't believe in God. They want you to worship the Chinese government. Right. Russia believes in God, and they have a ton of publications out there that are awesome, right? Their people do. So when you're looking at those two countries, you know, in my opinion, I think China snook Russia, and they cognitively captured them with some of their neurostrike stuff. That's what I think. Uh, look, I've always said, I know I get into these arguments with people, I, I've always felt that China is our bigger, bigger threat than Russia ever yep. thought about being. At least I think we have some cultural similarities with the Russians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the Chinese, we don't at all. Zilch. And um, with Taiwan, we do, which is the old China government. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but things, besides one that, one things I think we also need to worry about Russia is, is they are doing this advanced stuff, but they're also doing some other advanced stuff like cloning. They're 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 in the business of cloning, and right now they're trying to clone a three thousand year old Cycadian warrior. 
I think that's how you pronounce it. Is it Scythian or si- something like that? Come on, I got brain damage. I'm Sith- doing the best I, I can. I, I, I don't okay. know. I, I don't care what he is for real, but what you're trying I, to do is clone a 3,000 year old dude and see what he can bring to the table. So when, it, when you're talking about all of this added together, we're in trouble. We're in strange times. We're in strange times. Well, I mean, we're in I, trouble. I just, Not natural. I, yeah. I think we're on the verge of, uh, well, my question then is kind of going off in a little bit of a tangent here. Chase the rabbit. Have we, is some of this knowledge of this tech, is this terrestrial? Has some of this come from off world? I would say just read the Bible, man. I mean, there was a war in the heavens. The dragon fell to earth. The dragon is China CCP. I mean, that that is the dragon. Basically, Henry Kissinger helped them repair their damaged head. It was doped up with opium from the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, the the opium that, wars, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's repaired its head. Now we're dealing with the dragon. Um, that I mean, if you look at old maps, ancient maps, you got like the seven churches of Asia, seven angels of Asia. They all surround the demon of Asia. Like in the ancient maps, like there's a straight up demon in Asia. If you look at what the CCP is funding right now, they're funding, quote unquote, their monasteries where the dead are taken to a rock cliff, placed there. The vultures peck the bones and the bones just keep piling up. They're doing mass genocide to the Uyghur Muslims right now on the west side of China. Look, it's not that complicated. There's like a ton of evil in that country and it's exporting it to the world mm-hmm. through neurotechnology and the neuro strike and it suckered in a lot of the greedy families of the world that are trading uh, the love of money uh for you know evil to keep things simple it's where, the best way to think about it where's europe stand with all this some of them interact with china some of them don't some of them are uh, on the fence you see some of them joining nato we Got a new member of NATO joined recently, the NATO Alliance, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Wasn't it Palestine? Did didn't no no didn't, no, no, no. Oh, no not this NATO, was I'm sorry, the UN, country. the UN, the yeah, UN just different. voted. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. that's my bad. The UN just voted to allow NATO uh, um, observer, Palestine into uh, obs- the pa- UN observer status. Yeah, so observer only. status. Yeah. And then I think Ukraine, they want Ukraine to be a part of NATO, and the yeah. Russians don't want that. They never wanted that. Yeah. So Sorry, I'm not an expert bad, but, yeah. in the geopolitics of Ukraine and what Russia looks for. I mean, that's intelligence community and people above my pay grade, like State Department. But from what I have gathered is if you as an American try to help the Ukrainians, the AI and neuro weapons uh, from China and Russia will straight up attack you here in our well, home. Unless life. you're part of the Biden crime family. Uh, once you're aware of neurotechnology, like, how, you can glitch out someone and have them do something, and they won't even realize it. That's how advanced the tech is. Right? How, how, I've been in a room with Biden. I don't. I'm registered independent, just to be clear. You know, just just to put that in the clear. Okay. How how, how much of the U.S. population is compromised with this stuff? 170 million plus. That's my estimate. That's a, the number of TikTok users, not counting the amount of hardware users. It's 170 million plus that are cognitively captured. Whether or not they're compromised doesn't well, make, you, make sense. I would say that they're part of China's social credit monitoring system at this point in time. I, but it's I, very covert unless you're aware of it. Because I've often wondered, how did we just literally in the last 10 years fall apart? I mean, we, we just... I mean, everything is just kind of turned on, on it upside down. Where, it, you know, I've always said, as, as Americans, we've always had our disagreements between conservatives and, and, and liberals. And, but there was, it was a kernel of kind of common belief in, in how things operate. And, and it seemed like that kernel has been completely disintegrated. And we're now agreeing to do things that are just, I shake my head, I'm going, what in the world? What, what, what happened? So I'm curious if some of this neurotech has caused this. Yeah, that's the enabler. That, that's what it's enabled. It has caused people to think completely, to just yep. abandon all reason whatsoever and embrace this 
goofiness. Or how about tolerate that behavior we, that 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago we would have never tolerated. Ex- yep. It makes and you so docile. Na- now we're just tolerating things because, well, it doesn't really affect me anymore. Well, now it's affecting well, everybody. Well, it just seemed like in the light, I would venture to say since, I hate to say it, but probably since the Obama. election of Obama, something different happened. And we just can't seem to get our act together. I, I don't I don't know what the deal is. I'm beginning to wonder, is that that period, this sort of tech really started to make infiltration into American society? And we have fallen apart. 100%. We have literally fallen apart as a culture. And I, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, you hear some of these people when you listen to them talk and it's like, what world did you wake up in? Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I mean, what's going on here? So that's what I'm kind of thinking that maybe there are been, they have been, their brain has been completely well, but reprogrammed, how, so to think speak. Think about how long that's been going on since J.D. Rockefeller said, I will bankrupt America. Since they bankrupted him or tried to take all his money away, he has been under the one mission to destroy America. Well, now his foundation and trust run by other people are doing the same thing he is target americans okay think about simple just the simple things back then when they didn't have nanotechnology what did they have they had petroleum based chemicals so bread had three chemicals in it or three ingredients in it now it's got 39 and 33 of them are petroleum based chemicals So they've been destroying the fabric of America for a long time. Now they just have better tools to do it with. Now they can not only just destroy you and make you so unhealthy that you have to rely on more petroleum-based drugs and chemicals and medicines to just keep you, you know, copacetic. Now they can go and target you and make you and let you do something else. So I'm going to tell you what concerns me, and you, you briefly mentioned it, I, I'm I'm really now concerned with this with the advances in AI and how this plays into this. It amplifies everything. It gives literally you can have one person or a small group with an AI BCPS system and they can do nation state level damage. Mm-hmm. It's in the in the wrong hands. It's horrible because you can control multitude of people with AI multitudes mm-hmm. of people. It's just. I mean, it's scary. See, I mean, before I, it was one person, maybe a team of five affecting one person. Now you've got one or a group of five dealing with thousands and thousands of people. That's what AI does for you. So what's the next step in this development of this tech? Where do you see it making the next big jump? I would say, you know, we already have AI BCPS systems out there. They're at war with one another. You have NATO Alliance AI BCPS versus Chinese CCP Coalition AI BCPS, and that's the current state of the neural war going on in the world right now. But then you have these little terrorist groups in other nation states that have this weapon platform that can pierce and so a bunch of other disruption and confusion. So I think the fog of neural war is going to increase. And unless we have an effective countermeasure to address it with return to signal senders, uh, a technology to do a return to a sender, uh, then it will uh, continue to get worse, right? So that's basically what I see in the fog and rural war. And then I see a continued decoupling between China, CCP coalition, people are choosing their sides, um, and then hyper war uh, between those. And then a reduction in the population from, what, 7 billion plus down to a billion less. Um, I think that's where it's going to end up circa 2050. And there's a lot of... And that's not that far away. Yeah, and I I, I think there... I don't like to make forecasts on this, but if you look at phosphate for food, we're running out of phosphate. We've already mined entire islands full of bird dung replaced the nations like literally we've moved the nations in the pacific islands that have the phosphate mines to hawaii like one of the nations i think nauru if i'm not mistaken i used to live in hawaii and downtown honolulu and one of the skyscrapers there a whole nation state got relocated into it to live so they could mine 
So I think if we continued on the current trajectory, I think we'd run out of our key resources and then you fall off the whole cliff. So I think someone or some group is coordinating and managing the depopulation of the world under the guise of neurotechnology. But then you have other nation states that caught wind of it, and now you have neuro strikes going on, and everything's a mess right now. That's what I think. I mean, 2050, drop it to 1 billion. I mean, we got how many? Earth's got what, seven? Over. So, oh, uh, seven? The UN says they want to do that by 2035, and they're going to do it through um, Earth I mean, control. And, I mean, and, uh, so I, here's how you can do that, and they've been doing that. Oh, you got a, anybody wear blue jeans with metal zippers? Yeah. If you look at the uh, all the telecommunication systems in the world, the frequencies and the wavelengths interact perfectly with the zipper. So it's frying your sperm or frying your ovaries resulting in cysts. If you're a man or a woman, don't wear metal zippers. Wear nylon or plastic, a polymer zipper. Um, just known fact. Oil and gas guys, the Rockefellers, would like that because you're going to buy more petroleum-derived mm-hmm. plastics. <laughs> so, you know, you got to play the groups against each other. Well, that's shady. The other way is uh, psionic weapons. So getting back to the vaccine comment made earlier, what the majority of people here on Earth are not aware of is that China in 2019 turned on the world's largest psionic elf transmitter. With psionic elf weapons, there are specific frequencies that you can tune to the hundredth of the decimal, and you can degrade the DNA and the RNA in people in another nation across the world. With one of these weapons, you can cover two-thirds of the world. If you set it to the right frequency and dose a nation with it, you'll degrade their DNA and RNA. They will express that through miscoded proteins and plaques that are plugging up people's arteries and veins. You can do that. Anyone who has one of these transmitters can do that globally uh, or locally. You can do it as well, which is not ethical. Don't do it. Um, Some of the numbers will freak you out. That actually are the frequencies. I'm not going to put them on here for good reason. Uh, But there are so many. This is a sad thing in the world. You know, we have amazing technology. We could use it for good, but certain groups are using it for evil. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like any technology. So how could this technology be used for good? Well, we talked about that in a former episode. We talked about the the healing frequencies. So it can that, that so there are. It, it's just what what um, Brandon said earlier. People use it for good and bad. As well as there are good frequencies, there are bad frequencies that somebody can take advantage of. Yep. Are they right now pursuing technologies to help? And yep. how is that being marketed out to the public, or at least in the in the medical field where, I mean, I assume this kind of the healing version of this technology would be utilized. So this is how it's going down or going up, depending upon if you're getting healed or hurt, healed or degraded. The way new physics and all this advanced technology is packaged into items that consumers purchase, whether it's through the medical or through the food base or through water, based upon their decisions of what they're purchasing, There are certain um, genetic treatments done to the plants. Like you could put gene drives in plants that help maintain your genome at at a healthy uh, sequence. That's done. uh, Can be done now. It's proven technology. You can also imprint like vitamins. Uh, If you notice, if you buy vitamins, sometimes they're in plastic bottles. Sometimes they're in glass. Sometimes they're in an electronically sealed, what looks like an electronics bag when you open it up. There's a reason for that. The stuff that's not in an electronics bag or not in glass, is not enhanced. And what I mean by enhanced is it's not imprinted with near-field scalar waves that have the signature of key healing um, um, properties that are scanned in from like a vitamin C molecule, for example. So if I'm purchasing vitamin C, a pill, I can take it. That's a physical consumption that I'm doing a vitamin C. But I can also purchase water, like uh, smart water is a perfect example. Anything with the name smart, that's neurotech or somehow linked to neurotechnology. That's kind of the code word, the codex that they use. Um, I worked on smart equipment. That's how I know that, and we'll leave it at that. Um, So smart water as an example, or whatever water, um, I'm just going to put it out there. That is high probability enhanced, and when you're 
in taking it. It's enhanced at a pH level from uh, an alkalinity uh, stabilization perspective to not enable bad stuff to grow in your body. Uh, alkalinity between 8 and 9 is really awesome uh, for your body uh, to consume. But then on top of it, it can be imprinted uh, with the signature of vitamin C. So you're drinking water, a bottle of water, that actually has vitamin C properties in it, but you can't see it, but you're putting it in your body, and that's helping you overcome all the, uh, all the stuff in the world that wants to kill you now, basically. Does so, that answer the question? So what are some of the things that we as people can do to maybe help us mitigate this world that we live in with neurotech as far as what can we eat, not eat, drink, not drink, what, what being, or, or engage in various activities. What, what are some of those things? Uh, so this is what I'm doing to recover, uh, water. Um, I am distilling my own water and then I'm adding electrolytes and base to it, uh, to make it alkaline. Uh, I have researched enough now to get into the imprinting uh, of water uh, with near field technologies to have a library of vitamin C and everything else that transmits into the water. Um, and I'll be sharing that information in the clear. Uh, there's a couple of other researchers that have shared it in the clear, and uh, it's just hard to find it. It's like it's, the information is shielded by an AI from building awareness to other people unless it's spread through word of mouth. Uh, the other thing is, um, I'm only eating twice a day now. Uh, and that's how I used to always eat. Um, and I'm really focusing on vegetarian. Uh, and I'll have meat every now and then, but it has to be kosher or halal uh, prepared. Um, that's basically the only way I'll have meat. Um, I'll have dairy, but I don't mix the dairy and the meat within like a six to eight hour window. Um, so dairy, milk, cheese, uh, soy isolate, whey, uh, protein powder. Um, I keep them separate. I don't mix. I don't commingle them. Um, I don't eat yeast anymore, so it's all unleavened bread. I don't touch bread. Anything that has yeast in it, I stay away from completely. Um, stay hydrated. Get sunlight. I'm using um, scalar near field. Let me let me rephrase it. I'm using near near field transmitters, and I'm using elf transmitters to not get cognitively uh, relinked. Um, you got to remember, I was attacked and I was linked. Uh, to a, a psionic elf system. And that's how one of the ways I was able to be tracked and monitored pretty easily by some of our enemies. And uh, you can delink from that if you have one body elf transmitters. Uh, so I have that for cognitive privacy. Um, and then you can change your elf uh, transmitter frequency if you want to go to sleep, if you want to be alert. You, you can change it and it alters your mood. Um, the scalar, what I call a near field now, I think it's a better term. It's a um, non traverse wave. It's non-transverse. In other words, it's like a longitudinal wave is the physical world equivalent that you can see. You can see longitudinal waves uh, through like a, uh, a soundboard with sand on it. And um, that's, that's cymatics is the field where you can actually ob visually observe that. Uh, what the near field does uh, is it literally time reverses your cells. If you're in a near field bubble uh, with the right pattern, um, that it's trans, um, basically it's moving at 1.5 times the speed of light. So for every one minute that it's on, that you're visually observing through light, it's actually rejuvenating your cells by a multiple of 1.5, bringing them back to where they were healthy, uh, which can help with telomere repair and a bunch of other stuff. There's also NAD. Uh, which I think uh, Sinclair out of Harvard worked on NAD molecule or some of the sirtuins that helps uh, for cellular repair. Um, you know, I'm not about being immortal. I don't think that should be one's focus in life. I think we should be focused on finding grace in life. But I think that in a world where it's geared to degrade you now through the spectrum, through various other mechanisms, you need to be aware of this stuff to live a healthy uh, lifestyle without being messed with. Um, so I'd say the food, the water, the people that you interact with is way more important than it used to be uh, because of what's going on with all the symbio warfare, not just neuro warfare, but unrestricted warfare with synthetic biology. Um, I don't interact with a lot of people anymore. Sad to say, um, you don't know if you're interacting with someone that's healthy or not. Uh, I don't have a scanner on me. 
um, to determine that really quick right now. Uh, but that's a next step that uh, people need to field uh, ASAP, basically, um, to scan in the biosignature. And there's equipment that can do this. It takes a little bit of time. But you can scan in the biosignature of a person and see if it's healthy or not. This equipment exists today. Not many groups know about it. Uh, but making just a handheld version of it that's really easy for someone, if you're going to go meet with some people, just literally scan in their biosignatures, not to do anything to them, but to identify, will you be harmed by interacting with this person? Yeah. Um, so I'd say, you know, the, the things that an average person can do listening to this without going overboard on a learning curve that will take them a long time, you know, distill your water, have high alkalinity water, um, follow the FLCCC Alliance protocols. Uh, that's been peer reviewed by a lot of medical doctors. And FLCC, PhD. what is that? FL Triple C. Uh, it's basically what does it stand for? So, FLCC is basically COVID. How to keep yourself from getting harmed by COVID? And COVID is a catch-all for all the sin bio warfare and all this junk, in my opinion. Yeah. So, uh, FLCCC. It's there's a website you can you can find it. Um, but I'll reference their information on my briefs on, uh, if you go to electrostasis.com or, uh, electrostasis.substack.com, I've got briefs with one pagers that have all the, uh, list of references and work cited. And I have a one pager on what I take now and what I've taken to get better, uh, cognitively. I still have part of this, what wears spy bug in me and it's very persistent state and hard to get rid of. Uh, it's just the nature of the technology. Well, with that being said, I guess also we could uh, we could say for anyone out there, if you want to try and reach out to us, a Facebook page as well, where you can uh, you know send us some comments. I think we've had some people that have kind of reached out to say they wanted more information about this as well, which is interesting. Um, uh, again, facebook.com forward slash retrospect pod, or you can uh, email us, uh, get it together at gmail.com, where you can send those more long form responses because. A lot of times when we touch these big subjects like that, I feel like people have a lot to say usually. But anyways, until next week, thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. God bless. And forewarned is forearmed. Just uh, be mindful to not get cognitively captured covertly. Thank you for hanging out with us today. You are the best. Peace. Peace.